Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Paulus, 317 Cav Squadron Commander. It was good. Uh, it was a nice flight and a good opportunity to go uh, across country with a pretty sizable group of the squadron. So just opportunity to fly with a number of the different pilots, change different jobs throughout the flight, see uh, a number of small FBOs and, and areas, airports in the country that we don't typically get an opportunity to land at and have them get an opportunity to see us. Uh, they don't usually see six Apaches coming in, so we got a fair bit of, uh, of love from a lot of the, uh, the local, uh, local populace when we came in, uh, which was a great opportunity to just kind of show off the squadron and, and talk about the Apache. So the last shipment of Echoes now means that as part of the NetNef, new equipment training, new equipment fielding, uh, we are complete with the fielding portion. So we now have our full allotment of AH-64s that the squadron is supposed to have. Uh, and it'll allow us to do a couple of things. Number one, uh, we can field an entire squadron, uh, deploy as an entire squadron if called upon. Uh, it also gives us a little more flexibility in training. While we are still doing the new equipment training, we now have enough aircraft to really start doing uh, some additional training internal to the squadron, particularly as we get prepared for gunnery. Uh, and the Ziaco models themselves uh, really bring a significant increase in capability to the division and the Army as a whole. Uh, just between the, the older Delta models and the new Echoes that we now have, uh, their range, their ceiling, uh, the amount of firepower that they can carry uh, is pretty significantly increased over the Delta model, uh, not to mention the system upgrades that it brings with respect to uh, its ability to integrate with unmanned aerial systems, both the Shadow and the Gray Eagle, uh, as well as uh, vastly improved sensors for its use as a reconnaissance platform. Uh, it's a really nice aircraft, quite frankly. Um, I only have a little bit of time flying the Delta models, uh, but I can already see just the difference between the Deltas and the Echoes. Uh, what a much nicer airframe it is, both in terms of power, uh, its ability to fly, it really just wants to fly. Um, and so what it's going to do for our training is really give us the opportunity to train uh, on the cutting edge of Army technology with the most advanced uh, weapons platforms that the Army is fielding uh, throughout the entirety of the Army, both air and ground. Um, and really still looking forward to gunnery with these aircraft. Uh, this will be the first opportunity that all 24 of these have had to actually conduct a gunnery shoot for the gun, the weapon system itself, the gun. Uh, they've never shot before, so just the opportunity uh, to make sure that this aircraft works, it at, works as advertised and does what it was designed to do, uh, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and I really have no doubt that it will. Uh, but it'll just build a level of confidence amongst the crews and the squadron uh, that we are prepared to go out and do our mission. Uh, in addition to that, with the increased capability that the aircraft brings, particularly with its ability to do manned unmanned teaming with both the Shadows and the Gray Eagles, uh, just our ability to integrate them into the gunnery and utilize them as the reconnaissance platform that they were designed for, I think will be a really, really good training event and a good opportunity, uh, not just for the squadron, but for the brigade as a whole. Uh, I just say that um, it's been a, an honor for this squadron uh, to be part of the Army's modernization effort. Um, I know how important it is, particularly for Army Aviation, to stay at the vanguard and on the cutting edge of technology, and this airframe really is. Um, and truthfully, the, the process to go from the Delta models to where we are today has been su surprisingly smooth and surprisingly easy, particularly with the amount of support that we have gotten across the aviation enterprise, uh, not just from PM, the product manager, uh, but AMCOM for maintenance support, uh, Fort Rucker, DES. Uh, so it's really been a whole of, of aviation enterprise effort to get us to where we are today and field these last six aircraft. And as we finish up the, the training uh, coming into October, uh, it'll be, we will be the most well-trained and, and most capable squadron in the Army. And it'll be good when we're done. Captain Kyle Applegate, the commander of Alpha Troop 317 Cav. Our flight was a was a pretty incredible experience. So we started in the deserts of Arizona and we worked our way uh, east through Texas. We transitioned over to swampland and you know the Louisiana, Mississippi area and then we got back to the nice treed areas of the southeast United States. Uh, and along the way we stopped at a bunch of different FBOs, uh, large airports, small county municipal airports, 
So we got to see a wide variety of people. Um, we got to meet a, a whole bunch of people that were excited to see the new aircraft, to ask some questions about it, and to really see modernization uh, in the real world. And, and one of the cool things about the FBOs, as we were going along, the, the commanders, and there were four of us, all left our, our troop patches and stickers on the doors, and we got to see the aviation lineage. We stopped at airfields where B-52s had flown at before, F-18s, etc. So it was a it was a nice way to see Army aviation represented uh, in, the, in the larger defense aviation enterprise. So we had a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of good experience. We had a senior crew uh, across the 12 of us. So it was a good opportunity for the troop commanders to fly together in something that we would normally not do. It was a great experience. For the division, is the squadron is finally ready to start to integrate with our ground force peers uh, and start to set the conditions for advanced training um, within 3CAB and with one ABCT and two ABCT to start to build our interoperability and to generate combat power for the ground force commander. Uh, and so the new aircraft give us the greater technology needed to interface with unmanned teams. So we're fielding new Gray Eagles, and we've got Shadows, uh, and all of these assets combined will give the Ground Force Commander a greater picture of the, uh, the situational awareness of the battle space. So the, the new Echoes have a, a host of new capabilities that are a little bit better than the Delta. So I, this is the first time that I've flown an Echo was with this transition in fielding. So I've experienced firsthand the, the faster, the, fast, the aircraft's faster. Um, it's got more power, so we can carry more munitions. It's IFR, uh, so we can fly instrument rated, or we can fly it in the clouds, essentially. So that gives our aviators the ability to train in more realistic conditions, knowing that we have the ability, if we need to, to commit to instrument flight. So as we prepare uh, to, as we prepare for any real world contingency, the new aircraft gives us a greater level of comfortability at home station training. Uh, and the new technology associated with the aircraft removes some of the thought process from the crews. So that enables us to start to think beyond the, the aircraft a little bit further and start to visualize the ground force commander's plan and seamlessly integrate with them and, and figure out the best way that we can support. Whereas before with the Delta, we didn't have quite the same technology. So the air crew was, was coordinating inside the aircraft a little bit more and was less able to think outside. So, the aircraft is great for air mission commanders, it's great for platoon leaders, and it's great for troop commanders to be able to fight the aircraft, fight their platoons, and fight their troops. So with any new piece of equipment, it's always exciting for the first time you put it to use. So we've got a couple hundred hours in, in training mission flights in and around the local area, but this will be the first time that we've had the ability to use the aircraft for its intended purpose. To employ lethal munitions against the, uh, the enemies of the United States of America. So a gunnery is an opportunity for us as air crews, as platoons, and as troops, and as a squadron to validate our ability to use the new aircraft. So we're excited. Uh, there's a host of new features, but the main thing that we're excited about is, is greater interoperability with uh, manned unmanned teaming. So with our shadows and, and the gray eagles within 3CAB, we're excited to put those to use in a realistic gunnery experience that will help us, the air crews, understand the capabilities of the aircraft because we've, we've learned about them academically so we're excited to go out there in the field and actually see what they can do. So this is the first time that I've been part of a, a large equipment fielding like this. Um, it has been interesting to see the just the amount of effort that it takes across the aviation enterprise from the the 15 Romeos our great maintainers here um, some of the other MOS's and in, in Delta Troop our support troop and then flying out to Mesa, we were able to see, meet, uh, and take a tour of the Boeing plant. And it was a humbling experience to see a, how the Apaches are, are built and the amount of intensive love and care that it takes to, to make one of these airframes. Um, so I think, you know, it, it puts it into perspective what we do. It's, it's exciting to go fly. Uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic aircraft, but it was nice to go out on the trip to be able to see all the, the players along the way that helped make it happen. So we had a great experience with our, uh, with the DCMA folks out at Mesa. Mesa plant was great, um, and they were fully welcoming and, and invited us in and, and helped us see the Apache. And just, it is a team effort to make this aircraft, and it's a team effort to employ it, and this is a great peek behind the curtain to see what makes an Apache.